What's up my friends, welcome back. So as you can see we have a little bit of echo in this room because right now this is a new workshop, but I'll try to remove that in the editing process. Anyway, a few months ago we've made a circuit that will pass DC voltage to AC voltage and that is called an inverter. And then we've made an improved one that was using SPWM signals in order to create a sinusoidal shape at the output as we have in our home outlets. But then I had a lot of questions on how to make a variable frequency driver in order to control the speed of AC motors. And to do that we have two ways. The first one is to make the same inverter circuit but to add a frequency control to that circuit. And the second way is to make a full variable frequency driver or VFD. And with that circuit we first rectify the signal and we get around 320 volts DC and then using an h bridge driver with some IGPTs we create the AC signal at the output. Now this last part is a little bit dangerous because we are working with very high voltages and also huge capacitors like this one and this can store a lot of charge. So working with this and testing on the breadboard is not recommended. So for now I will only show you the circuit and explain how it would work but I can show you the final result. Because during testing I always got myself injured because this capacitor almost blowed up and make a huge spark here and blow the drivers and all the components so right now I can show you the final result of the, of the, of the VFT but I can show the results of the inverter with the frequency control. So in this video we'll have two parts and I'll try to put the timestamps around here in the video. So the first part of the video I'll explain the inverter and then we will add frequency control to that circuit and in the second part I'll explain the VFT and how we could make that circuit and how I'm planning to make that circuit and I've also made the PCB and order it to GLC PCB because right now for only $2 you can get those PCBs so I can start testing once again. And I've also ordered some new drivers because the drivers that I have right now they blow up because of the high voltage. But anyway, in this video we'll learn how the VFD works and also how to add frequency control to the, the, to the inverter. So just to make sure once again in this video I won't show you the final results of the VFT but I'll show you how it works and how I'm planning to do it. So let's see how to create the frequency control and how to control the speed of AC motors like for example this one here. This is an AC motor, an induction motor that I took out from a microwave oven. So make sure you stay safe, don't fool around with high voltages, make sure to subscribe and activate the notification bell. So let's get started. If you want low cost and fast production PCBs, you might want to know about the sponsor of this video, GLC PCB. And by the way, they recently won the prize of outstanding boot at their own maker fair. You can get high quality prototyping PCBs for only $2 and they also have the SMT service available, where you could send the Gerber file together with the boom and the pick and place file and receive the boards with all the components already soldered. And that's starting for only $7. What's up my friends, welcome back. Let's start with the first circuit and see how the inverter works and how we can change the frequency. Here I have an AC induction motor that I took out from a microwave oven. I now connect it to 220 volts from the main outlet of my home and as you can see it spins at a constant speed and that is given by the outlet frequency which here in Spain is 50 Hz. This frequency is constant so if you want to change the speed of the motor we would have to change the frequency. For that, let's recap the inverter circuit. Remember that this circuit created a high AC voltage output from a low DC voltage input, below 20 volts. We had two transistors connected to a transformer and by switching the transistors we can create the AC output. In the past tutorials that frequency was fixed to 60 Hz, to simulate the common frequency of our home outlets. The frequency is given by the pulses applied to the transistors from the Arduino. So all we have to do in order to change the speed is to change the frequency of the pulses applied to the transistors. I've mounted the same circuit on my breadboard. I'm now using some powerful IGBTs instead of MOSFETs that I've used in the past tutorial. I also add this potentiometer and I will read this with the Arduino and change the pulse frequency in the code in order to change the output speed. I create a simple code and upload it to the Arduino and let's test it. At the transformer output I connect the AC motor and supply the entire circuit with 20 volts. So as you can see the motor spins and if I change the potentiometer value the speed of the motor increases or decreases. And we can also see this on the oscilloscope here with this signal. 
Now the maximum speed of this motor is quite limited, and around 80 or 90 Hz it will desynchronize, meaning that the magnetic field inside of the core is rotating faster than the motor itself. To understand that, let's see how a common AC motor or induction motor works. Obviously, the motor has two main parts. The stator, which in our case is this metal frame around here and this coil, and also the rotor, which is this round part that will be actually spinning. This motor is for one phase voltage, so we only have one coil. For a triple phase motor, you will see three coils, separated 120 degrees one to each other. But on the rotor, we can also see some metal bars. When we apply an oscillating AC current through the coil of the stator, a magnetic flux will be created in the metal core. Now imagine that we have a closed loop copper wire in the middle of the core. By Lorentz law of magnetic induction, we know that when the magnetic flux is changing inside of a closed loop coil, that will induce current in that copper coil. So that current will create an electromagnetic force like this over the coil. So in this way, the entire closed loop coil will start spinning in this direction. That's how we spin the rotor using induction with AC voltage. But instead of just one closed loop, the rotor has multiple loops, and that's why we see this pattern on the rotor. Ok, so back to our experiment. Using the transformer we don't have to mind of insulation problems, because in this way the high output voltage is separated by the low voltage of the Arduino and the drivers. But the output voltage as you can see are just some square waves. In another tutorial we have seen how to use the SPWM signals to create a pretty decent sine wave just as we have on our home outlets. So see that video in order to know more about SPWM. Now I've changed a little bit the code so we could change the frequency of the SPWM pulses. Using the same schematic, I now upload a new code to the Arduino. I also place a high voltage capacitor at the output and now let's see the output signal again. As you can see we now have a pretty decent sine wave. And if I rotate the potentiometer, I can get different frequencies as well. If you read the code, you will see that we don't just change the frequency speed, but also the width of each of the small pulses of the SPWM signal, so that might result into a deformed sign shape, depending on the speed. But I have to say it once again, this circuit is just for tests and is far from perfect. But from 50 to around 120 Hz, I get a pretty decent sine wave. And again, with the motor connected, the sign shape might change as well, because of the inductance properties of the motor coil but I was able to control the speed of the motor with this code as well. Ok, so this is one way to create the variable frequency inverter. Maybe using more IGBTs and a bigger transformer and fine tune a little bit the code, you could get more power and even control bigger AC motors like these ones. Ok, now let me explain the other part of this video, the variable frequency driver. This is not just a simple inverter anymore. To understand how this works, we have this circuit that I've mounted on my breadboard. Please don't mess around with high voltages because it could really hurt you, or even worse. There are a lot of components, so let me explain step by step. Here we have the main input of the circuit, and we get the high voltage from the home outlet. First, we have this full bridge rectifier, and this will give us only the positive side of the voltage. As you can see on the oscilloscope, this is the input, and this is the rectifier output. As you can see the input has positive and negative sides and the rectifier will give us the positive waves. That's how the rectifier works. Next, to store the charge, we add a high voltage capacitor. In this way we now have 320 volts DC. Now we have an H bridge made with IGBTs and this will create the AC output from those 320 volts DC. To control the IGBTs, the frequency and create the pulses at the gate, I'm using an Arduino. Since we work with very high voltages and the Arduino is very low voltage, we need to separate these parts. So for that we have these optocouplers. In this way the signal from the Arduino is passed to the optocoupler and this will use light to control the output instead of electricity. In this way we are protected. We can pass the signal from the optocoupler directly to the IGBT's gate or add the MOSFET driver in between. It's better to have the driver for more secure control. Now there is another problem. The IGBTs can handle hundreds of volts between the collector and the emitter, but the gate is still low voltage with a maximum of 20 volts. So we need another DC voltage value. So for that I'm planning to use this very small 220 to 12 volts AC to DC converter. 
This can deliver exactly 12 volts DC and 500 milliamps of current, and that's enough power to control the drivers and the optocouplers. The Arduino is powered with a USB cable, and in this way everything is separated and insulated. Now this is the full schematic that I've made for this project, but let's see another final animation of the VFD in order to understand how it should work. Ok, we start with 320 volts RMS AC input. We rectify that and store the charge in this high voltage capacitor, so now we have 320 volts DC. Then we have to control 4 IGBTs in an H bridge configuration. To enable or disable the transistor gate, we use the Arduino, some optocouplers to separate the high voltage from the low voltage, and some MOSFET drivers, which will work the same with IGBTs. As you can see, the load, in this case the AC motor, is connected in the middle of the H bridge. When we enable these two transistors, those 320 volts will pass from this side of the motor to the other side, creating a magnetic field in one direction. Now we turn off these transistors and we enable these other transistors. So now a current will flow in the opposite direction, so the magnetic field is now reversed. If we switch these transistors on and off, in this way we can create an oscillating AC signal of high voltage. And by changing the frequency of these pulses applied to the transistors, we can also control the output frequency, and by that the speed of the AC motor. That's how the circuit is supposed to work, and when I receive the PCBs that I've made and the new drivers, I will post a new and better explained video. And yes, I've also made the board for this circuit, and order it to GLC PCB, until I don't receive it I won't give the final results, and sorry for that. Also have in mind that all these circuits and codes are only for experiments yet and you shouldn't use this for a professional project. Please stay tuned for more information in another video and also be careful working with high voltage. If you have any feedback about this circuit, please comment below, I would appreciate that. Also check the SPWM video and the HBridge videos below in order to understand more. I hope that you now have a basic idea about inverters and variable frequency drivers. Sorry that I don't have the final results yet. If you like this video give it a like and also consider subscribing and activate the notification bell. A huge thank you to all my patrons for supporting my projects. So thanks again and see you later guys.